Hi, everybody. It's Vicki Lee. If you like my speaking, then please like, share, and subscribe. We are going to go into Joshua 9 today. We have done a series called Think It Over, and I had even in my archives put forward a song that I wrote called Think It Over. I will put that link in the description box so you can go back and look at that teaching. We're going to go a little bit further into that today with what the Bible says about decision making. We're going to go straight into Joshua 9. I'm going to give you the scripture and then we're going to speak about the backdrop and the principle behind this teaching. Joshua 9, the Gibeonite deception. Now, when all the kings west of the Jordan heard about these things, the Israelites' victories, the kings in the hill country, in the western foothills, and along the entire coast of the Mediterranean Sea, as far as the Lebanon, the kings of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. That's a lot of sites, isn't it? <laughs> or ites, I should say. They came together to wage war against Joshua and Israel. However, when the people of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, they report they resorted to a ruse. They went to a delegation whose donkeys were loaded with worn out sacks and old wineskins, cracked and mended. They put worn out and patched sandals on their feet and they wore old clothes. All the bread of their food supply was dry and moldy. Then they went to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal and said to him and the Israelites, We have come from a distant country. Make a treaty with us. The Israelites said to the Hivites, but perhaps you live near us. So how can we make a treaty with you? We are your servants, they said to Joshua. But Joshua asked, who are you and where do you come from? They answered, your servants have come from a very distant country because of the fame of the Lord, your God. We have heard reports to him all that he did in Egypt and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan. Sihon, king of Hashbon, and Og, king of Bashan, who reigned in Asheroth. And our elders and all these living in the country said to us, take provisions for your journey. Go and meet them and say to them, we are your servants. Make a treaty with us. This bread of ours was warm, and when we packed it at home on the day we left to come to you, but now see how dry and moldy it is? And those wineskins that were filled were new, but see how cracked they are, and our clothes and sandals are worn out by the very long journey. The Israelites sampled the provisions, but did not inquire of the Lord. Then Joshua made a treaty of peace with them to let them live, and the leaders of the assembly ratified it by oath. Three days after they made the treaty with the Gibeonites, the Israelites heard that they were neighbors living near them. So the Israelites set out on the third day, came to their cities, Gibeon, Kephara, Beeroth, and Kairoth, Jerem. But the Israelites did not attack them because the leaders of the assembly had sworn an oath to them by the Lord God. Of Israel. The whole assembly grumbled against the leaders, but all the leaders answered, We have given them our oath by the Lord, the God of Israel. We cannot touch them now. This is what we will do to them. We will let them live so that God's wrath will not fall on us, fall on us for breaking the oath we swore to them. They continued, Let them live, but let, let them be woodcutters and water carriers in the service of the whole assembly. So the leader's promise to them was kept. Then Joshua summoned the Gibeonites and said, why did you deceive us by saying we live a long way from you while actually you live near us? You are now under a curse. You will never be released from service as woodcutters and water carriers for the house of my God. Then they answered Joshua, your servants were clearly told how the Lord your God had commanded his servant Moses to give you the whole land and to wipe out all its inhabitants from before you. So we feared for our lives because of you. And now that is why we did this. We are now in your hands. Do to us whatever seems good and right to you. So Joshua saved them from the Israelites and they did not kill them. That day he made the Gibeonites woodcutters and water carriers for the assembly to provide for the needs of the altar of the Lord at the place the Lord would choose. And that is why, and that is what they are to this day. Fascinating story. The children of Israel 
came out of Egypt. They'd been in slavery for 400 years. Moses brought them out. They were supposed to take a few days journey to go into the promised land, but they wouldn't do it. And they went round and round the mountain and they died out in rebellion, never crossing over, never facing the giants, never taking the promise. So a new leader came up after Moses di died and immediately God said, you've got three days, gather all your provisions. The younger generation is going to cross the Jordan and go over into the promised land. Now, if you look in the last few days, I have talked about when they were about to cross over and they're camped on the border of Moab, then the high priest, the dark priest was sent in to, to, to Balaam, was sent in to curse them. Balaam was a powerful dark priest, just like Moses was God's man. He, would, he was powerful, and they sent him in to curse the Israelites, but God cut him off and said, no, 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 even spoke to him through his donkey. And God said to him, you will bless them, and instead of cursing them, the dark the priest blessed the Israelites. We were talking about the power of God to do his will and his way. So the Israelites have crossed over and they're taking the land and everywhere that they step in obedience, they're taking everything. And the, the people in the land know you can't, you can't, they're going to just be prevailing. You've lived, you've not been of God, and now time is up. And now consequences are being meted out. And the Gibeonites said, if you can't beat them, join them. So what the Gibeonites couldn't do through standing and fighting, they did through deception. Notice, and this is the big, the big principle of this whole teaching. They come into the camp. They're dressed to deceive. They've set out to deceive. This is deception in motion. And they say to them, make an oath with us. Do it now. If you go into these scriptures, look up this chapter, read through it. If you have a Bible at home, underline when they say, do it now, now, now. They want a decision made now. They're pressing for a decision because it's deception. And the truth has an ugly way of showing its head when you're trying to deceive. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when we are trying to deceive. And so they need Israel to act fast. They need them to make a decision now. And they're pushing them. And when you go before the Lord and you take the issue before the Lord, it takes time doesn't it? And so the Israelites cave to the pressure. The Israelites at this time are victorious everywhere, but they're deceived by people coming into their own camp, pushing them with a lie to make the decision. And when we do that, it's like, it's like if you're a fish, I've heard it said this way, it's like if you're a fish in the water and you see this one, this beautiful sparkling something and it just grabs your attention and the sunlight shines down through the water and it's all these colors and it's moving and it's just beautiful and the fish is mesmerized and the fish goes and bites it and it just bit into the bait and the hook is in his mouth and you're caught. That's how it is for us in life, isn't it? That thing comes into our camp. That thing approaches us. That thing is dressed perhaps like something else. Perhaps we need time to look at it. Perhaps we need time to not only speak into it, perhaps, but perhaps we need the time to take it before the Lord and to inquire of the Lord. Perhaps this shiny object that is so beautiful and dressed in the way that it wants us to see it is pushing us to make a decision and do it now. So when someone comes to you and says, now, there are times when you pray for opportunities. There are times when the Holy Spirit brings you something like he told 
the Israelites, the older generation, they went and they, they, they checked out the land and they came back. Joshua and Caleb gave a good report. Others said, nope, nope, there's giants. And they were scared and they said, we're not going to do it. They changed their mind quickly and God shut the door and said, no, no, no. You were supposed to act on that. That was what the Lord sent them out to do. His command was to do this. But there are times when we need to step in what we know is the way to go. And he expects us to do it. But then there are times when we're supposed to step back, inquire of the Lord. And that person, that thing, that organization, that decision needs to wait a little bit longer. So this story is about inquiring of the Lord, about checking it out, about seeing it through. And when you are that person who comes into that camp to deceive, that's an issue all its own, isn't it? We talked about when the righteous fall. I've gone back and did a series on that. Go back and look at that. When the righteous fall, people, biblical characters in the hall of faith did some pretty bad things. They made some pretty bad mistakes because they didn't think it through. They didn't inquire of the Lord. They did what they wanted. And then the consequences were meted out not only for them, but for sometimes us today. And a lot of those ites I was talking about when they listed those those tribes that they were fighting against, many of those came from bad decisions that the believers in the history of Israel made. Um, children that were spawned, sometimes not out of being in God's perfect will. Those become the tribes that they have to fight against in the future. So Here's a tribe. If you couldn't beat them, join them. And you can't join them by telling the truth. You've got to do it by deception. Don't be the person of God that falls for it. You can have beautiful growth. You can have that righteous path that you're on, that the Lord is seeing you through. And things can be going great. And sometimes, and I talk about this all the time, the way the world sees it is this, but it's actually this. And the way we see it sometimes is this, but biblically it's this. And so your success doesn't have to be stunning. You can be not much moving here, but in the spiritual realm, it's forming, it's coming, it's coming. And the Lord is going before you and everywhere that you step, you're going to be victorious. But in that journey, you can have someone or something approach you and it looks like an angel of light, but it's not. They can tell you a story and it's not. And we have to inquire of the Lord and use our discernment so that we don't make unholy oaths that we didn't inquire about to the Lord. And then once we make the oath, the truth comes out and then we are bonded to what was supposed to not be part of our lives and our paths. They said, we're going to spare you. You're going to live, but you're going to be woodcutters and water bearers for us. But Israel had them That was their reality. What they were unstoppable in, going straight as an army, they were infiltrated in other ways, weren't they? Don't be infiltrated. The next teaching I will do, it will be to those who would deceive. We're going to speak to the deceivers in all of this. You know, I bring these stories so that we can understand, so that we can know, so that we can grow and be wise. If you don't have the Lord Jesus Christ, they are a blessed people. The victories are given to the righteous. 
not the wannabes, but those who truly love the Lord. You can be one of those. It doesn't matter where you've been in your past. It doesn't matter if you were or have been the deceiver. You can come out of it. He makes all things new. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. I hope this helps everybody. If you like my speaking, please like, share, and subscribe.